Hi everyone! Today I'm going to share with you my experience in hiking the famous Four Days Three Nights W Track in Torres del Paine National Park. Torres del Paine National Park ranks the fifth in the world's most beautiful places by National Geographic, and made it to the cover of the magazine. We hiked the W Track from November the 17th to the 20th in 2023. It was spring in Patagonia, and the weather for the most time was nice and warm, with occasional cloudy days and snows. There's also not that many of people, so it's a perfect time to visit if you want to enjoy the nature all to yourself. On November the 16th, we drove from Puerto Natales to the park and spent the night there. The view along the way was amazing, and you definitely do not want to sleep through it. We saw a flock of sheep. We also saw many guanacos. Which are so cute and can only be found in South America. Our hotel Las Torres was luxurious and worth every penny. It's located by the mountains and it's suitable for tourists of all purposes, whether you're a hiker or you're simply looking for vacation and leisure. We spent two nights in this hotel. It's a spacious room with beautiful views by the window. It's also equipped with hot water shower. We had a three-course dinner and we felt so ready for the next day. Good morning! We woke up with this view. The breakfast was delicious. It has a variety of dairy options. It has fruits, breads, cookies, cakes, and enough protein to keep us energized. We started the hike at 8 in the morning. It was a beautiful day, not too cloudy. Today, we're going to hike up to Mirador Base Las Torres and hike back to Hotel Las Torres. The trail is approximately 12 miles slash 19.4 kilometers out and back the elevation gain is 3,326 feet slash 1 kilometer. Most people would finish it within 8 hours. The trail is not steep until the last rock pile. The temperature was around 0 to 7 Celsius degrees in mid-November, but most people, including ourselves, only need a t-shirt and a windproof jacket to hike the trail, with the sweater in the back for temperature changes. We arrived at Chileno and you can refill water here. Many people choose to stay at Chileno because it's a lot closer to the Mirador Base Las Torres. Oh, by the way, there's also a horseback riding service from Hotel Las Torres to Chileno, so that if you don't want to hike all the way, you can take this shortcut up until here. Chileno is located in a forest so that it has less wind. We are about to enter the final ascent. There are signs saying that this part of the trail closes at 3 p.m. and it takes about one hour to go up. The rock pile was not difficult to go up, but more difficult to go down. This is one of the rock piles and this is the view behind it. At the top, it was quite windy and even snowing. 
There are many people on the trail, so you gotta move fast to not block people behind you. We are finally at the viewpoint. It was snowing and very cold at the top, but I'm glad that the three towers are at least visible. The name of the park, Torres de Pane in Spanish, means Towers of Blue, which are exactly these towers here. I was not able to see blue towers, but still, even the white towers are stunning to see in person. The box lunch provided by our hotel contains a sandwich, an apple, energy snacks, and a cookie. I got a salmon sandwich and Francis got a beef sandwich. It was super filling and satisfying. The way down the rock pile was very demanding on the knees. On the way back, I saw a horror scene that I might not forget for the rest of my life. I saw someone died right in front of me. He got a heart attack. The despair screaming of the wife was echoing in the valley. I was very emotional because we acquainted this couple multiple times on the trail, and I was just seeing them lining up there on the top, taking pictures right in front of us. The husband asked the tourist to take a photo of both of them, and said that make sure it looks good because he's going to post it on Facebook. And then, not far away from Chileno, where he finally passed through the most difficult part of the trail, he got a heart attack and died soon after. It was very tragic, and I could not calm myself for several hours. All I want to say is, please make sure you know your physical strength and don't challenge yourself over the limit. We had a delicious dinner back at the hotel. This soup is a traditional Chilean fish stew, cooked with this fish called conger. It's also cooked with some sort of herbs that made the soup super rich. This was the best meal I had in Chile, and I highly recommend to anyone visiting Chile. Good morning! We slept in today because today is going to be a short hike. Today we are going to hike from Hotel Las Torres to Coronel's cabin. Sector Coronel, 10 kilometers, moderate. Let's go! It's estimated to finish within four and a half hours. Patagonia wind is real though. Hear it. The wind was so strong that it can literally blow you away. We found this place past the bridge with less wind and had lunch here facing the lake.
the lunch box was the same from yesterday's. It was so warm and beautiful that I wanted to take a nap. We spent the night at Kuno's cabin. It looks so cute in the mountains. The cafeteria was nice and cozy, and we made some new friends at dinner. We had a three-course dinner, and it was delicious and nutritionally balanced. We got a nice little private cabin. The view from the window is like a painting. The cabin does not have curtains. It's telling you to not sleep in. There's a fireplace in the room, and it's super warm. Unfortunately, the fire went off during the middle of the night, and it was so cold. Good morning. We started the hike today at 8:30 in the morning. The breakfast was delicious, but I forgot to take pictures. It had ham, cheese, bread, eggs, oranges, and all sorts of diary. Today we will be hiking to Francis Valley and spend the night at Pangne Grande. We are not planning to go to British Valley because I sprained my knees before the trip. It's going to be approximately 20 kilometers, and people usually finish it within eight hours. It's another beautiful day with no wind. On the road, we met many people in their 60s or 70s, and they walk fast. One of them was even one of the first women to run marathon in the 1970s. It inspired me so much that I want to be this cool when I'm in my 70s. Many people would choose to stay at the Refugio at Francis, which I think is also a great option. Francis also provides amazing food, hot water shower, and even heater in the room. More importantly, you can hike three kilometers less today, which saves about two hours. Italiano is very close to Francis, and we dropped our big backpack here and switched to a day pack. Okay, you ready? It's about three kilometers to Francis Valley from Italiano, and it's also a lot of rock piles, but it's a lot easier than day ones. Francis Valley was surprisingly warm. We had our lunch here. We were given sandwiches, oranges, and energy bars. The place where I belong. Ooh, did you hear that rumble? We made our way down to Italiano, and it's 7.5 kilometer to Pangne Grande. It's estimated to take about two and a half hours. We're spending the night at Refugio Pane Grande. Our room has three bunk beds. Surprisingly, it also had heater, which was a lifesaver, and I did not expect. Dinner was buffet style, and I missed my three course dinners from previous two nights. To be honest, it did not taste that good. It's the last day. Today is also a short hike because we are going to cheat. We are going to hike from Pangne Grande to Grey Glacier and take a boat to Hotel Grey. It's estimated to take three to four hours, which cuts down the hike by half compared to if you complete the full hike by returning to Pangne Grande and take a boat from there. Because we're heading to the glacier, it felt particularly cold on the way. 
The wind was very chilly. It's unbelievable to me that we're almost crossing the finish line. This was my first multi-day hike, and I'm going to share some closing thoughts. I think the whole experience really went above and beyond my expectations. The lodges and the food were so good, and I felt I was taken good care of. The trail was also beginner-friendly, and in my opinion, was not physically challenging if you're in some sort of shape. I sort of regretted for not bringing my big bulky camera on the trail because I overestimated the difficulty. I was also extremely lucky that I did not experience a single drop of rain, which apparently is rare in Patagonia. We arrived at Refugio Gray, our finish line. We had the lunch there. Oh. Cheers to a perfect ending. The boat dropped us off at the beach, which requires 20 to 30 minutes walk to Hotel Gray. On the beach, it was sort of in a wind tunnel, and the wind was blowing crazy. We took a rest in the gift shop and restaurant area to wait for our bus. Funny enough, the bus did not show up for two hours. After two hours, the bus finally came, but surprise! It showed up for a second and turned around and ran away. At this place, there was no signal, no Wi-Fi, no carpooling, no anything. We involved in the rangers to make radio communications. There were 10 people waiting for this bus at this stop, and it was so absurd that we had to take a picture. Finally, the bus came, and the view along the way was amazing. If I had one more day, I would totally bring my big camera and drive this road again to take some nice pictures. All right. That concludes for my W Trek adventure in Patagonia. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. I'll see you next time.